So who? This Christian missionary got stuck into an Arab sheikh. Day in and day out. Preaching to him that you're wasting your time, Ya Sheikh. Pray five times a day, up and down, up and down. You fast for one whole month and you straight jacket your life. You don't drink, you don't gamble, you don't eat the pig and on and on. Allah is not hungry for that. You want salvation? You believe that he sent his son into the world and he died for your sins and salvation is yours. God Almighty, he came down to earth and he died for your sins. Believe and be saved. And he won't let go. Every day he's there. Every day he's there. He's making life miserable for this poor Arab sheikh. How is he to get out of the difficulty? So he plans a strategy. He tells his his prime minister, his wazir, he said, look man, tomorrow when he comes, I want you to whisper something in my ears. Okay. He said, yes. That's all. And the missionary came. Assalamu alaikum. So the Arab, as usual, ahlan wa sahlan. Beautiful words of welcome. The most beautiful words of welcome in any language. Ahlan wa sahlan. Just think that you are a member of the family and sahl be at ease. If you want to pick your nose, you may do so. Like in Naam, it says, stand at ease. Now you can do what you like. Ahlan wa sahlan. So the guy sits down and he starts. Same old story. So the, the, the minister comes along and whispers something in the races, in the chief's ears. And the chief begins began to cry like a woman who has lost her husband. He, she started to cry. <laughs> so the priest wants to know what's wrong, what has happened. <laughs> so don't talk. So come on, man, come, on, please tell. tell us. You know we may sympathize with you. <laughs> no, you can't. He's crying, crying. Acting, actually, he's acting. So the priest is more eager to know what has happened, what's the sad news. So he said, you know, I just got the sad news that Akhi Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salam, the Archangel Gabriel, he died. Mamat, Marge, Jibreel alayhi salam, Marge. So the priest says, you fool, angels don't die. So the Arab Sheikh says, and you fool, you telling me that God died? The last two questions, the lady over here. Right. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil and did Mary have to wear a veil? Madam. Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover, shave off her head. Your Bible says that. The woman, the woman who bears her hair, says, shave them off, shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says, she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches, they don't believe all that. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street and people just walk by, looking the fun. Say, well, maybe they're enjoying themselves. Woman is being raped. No, no. I said, you are inviting it. Look, this modesty, the nuns, the nuns, you know, the nuns, Roman Catholic Church. Nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast at the Scarborough and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings, look, sure. <laughs> it's attracting, <laughs> look, even an old man like me, I tell you, my brother. <laughs> if, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. I'm telling you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. 
The thing that allures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. The Quran says. The Quran says. Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahwati min al nisa. Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, min al nisa. Women. Wal banin. Then son. You know, I got eleven sons. I can make my own football team. You know how? how the, you know, it makes me feel proud. I got eleven sons. You know, my own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Wal banin. And number three, wal qanati al mukantar min al zahabi wal fidda, and hoarded heaps of gold and silver, and wealthy land, and horses branded for excellence, and all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says the thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is women. And I'm telling my Western friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban. I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorry, lorry, trucks. We call them trucks here too. Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G North, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I said, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? <laughs> Except the man. You see, the woman is being diagnosed with so the Edward. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. It's a motor car, it's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes-Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle. I did 120,000 miles and I had to change for another Beetle and another Beetle and another Beetle. Then they stopped making the Beetle, you know the Volkswagen Beetle. They started the Golf, so I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW, but I'm forced to read this advert. In my newspaper, I see a BMW motor car and with a woman in the skimpy, skimpiest of bikini, what do you call the tanga, you know the G-string. She, she's standing in front of the motor car and it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. I'm asking, I'm asking, the woman of the car, the woman is buying the car, and the her is underlined, test drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is, the Westerner, he sells his mother, his wife, his daughter, his wife is a star, and she's been mangled on the screen, simulating rape, and they, they enjoy it. You, you enjoy your wife being simulated. It's not real rape. But you know, it's simulated, you can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter. And you enjoy, your wife is a star. So, sick, sick. No, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, we haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We try, we try to keep away from it. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. of those. You know, I could have like um, Mullah Nasrullah. You know, he was a character among us. And uh, this character, he was reputed to be a very, very uh, knowledgeable person. Alim. He used to wear just nice big turbans and he used to have those jubbas, you know. Not like me, you see. He used to have the jubbas and wherever he went, people flocked around him and they thought that he was a very learned man. So he goes into a city and everybody said it was Yawmul Juma, Friday. So everybody says, Mullah Sahib, you know, look, leaders in the Asa. I mean, we want you to lead us. We want you to deliver the khutbah and leaders in Salat. He's very shy. He knows he can't make the grade. But they force him. He said, look, you man, such a nice big beard, lovely beard, lovely turban and lovely clothes. <laughs> so they forced him. The poor fellow goes on to the member and he says, do you know what I'm going to speak about? So they said, yes. Oh, I says, then I don't have to waste my time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm going to speak about. So why waste time? You know it. 
So he got himself, you know, recused. He, he freed himself. The following Friday, he's still in the town, so they catch him again. He says, mm, you must. So he goes on to the member again, Juma time, for the football. And he's asking the same question. He says, do you know what I'm going to speak about? So they decided, they said, no, this guy, when he said last week, when he said, we know, he got scot free. He says, they said, no, no, we don't know. So he said, look, in that case, he says, no sense in talking to you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So the following week, the following week, they're still in the same city. So they prod him again onto the member. And he poses the same question. You see, people don't learn. He's posing the same question. He said, do you know what I'm going to speak about? So they had decided, they said, look, man, this guy got off twice. This time we'll make doubly sure that we catch him. So he said, half of us must say yes, and half of us must say no. So they did it, exactly. Half said yes, half said no. So he said, look, those of you who know, tell the others who don't know. <laughs> and he got off again. <laughs> I don't think I have that chance. سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله When you meet a Westerner, he says, how many wives have you got? You know, because at the back of the mind, he says, man, you got a haram, haram, you know, so many women in the house, how many? In my case, I said, look, I got only one. I'm married for more than 40 years now. And uh, I'm quite happy, I'm satisfied. I have only one. But this is always a standing joke. How many wives you got? The Arab, how many wives you got? The poor fellow, sometimes he might not have even one. But he says, how many? <laughs> how, many how many wives you got? They, it's a big joke. Because Islam allows polygamy, limited polygamy, up to four. I said, you know, it's an answer to your problem. You don't listen to what Allah is telling you, then you do all the unnatural things. You have your lesbians. Last June, last June, 300,000 sodomites, Qawmi Lut, they call them gays. They gathered in San Francisco, teen lakh, in San Francisco on a pilgrimage, Hajj Karandi in Nikolai, Hajj, in, in San Francisco, led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. But that nation is worried about you and me. He says, you're going to go to hell. They want to save us from hellfire. So they're sending the missionaries at the moment out of the world. 70,000 full-time crusaders, mujahids of Christianity, 60% are Americans. Work it out, 42,000 Americans are raising the dust throughout the world, wanting to save you from hellfire. They are in hell themselves. With 55 million drunkards, 20 million women who can't get husbands, absolute hell. I'm telling my Arab brothers jokingly, you know when I'm there, I keep on telling them jokingly. But sometimes many a serious thing they say, I said in jest, haste haste, hum serious cheat bol dete hain. So I tell the Arabs, I said, look man, you know you people keep on running to Bombay, running to Beirut, now running to Bangkok. I said, look, go to America. I said, help the poor Americans. Look, in New York, and from the East Coast, New York got one million more women than men. They can't get husbands. I said, look, you all bring four for each. <laughs> and your country is sparsely populated. Hardly any people in the country. Desert country, no people. I said, man, if you can't propagate Islam, procreate. <laughs> but nobody is following my advice. The first time when I started, you know, reading this in the newspapers, gay, I was getting confused. What is gay? <laughs> By God, look, I'm not pretending acting. I'm not a very learned man like most of you, you see. I passed through that elementary stage of education. I've been talking, talking, so I talked myself into this position of talking. That's all. Academic, academically, oh, m most of you, you know, you're far beyond me. But I knew this word gay from childhood, from school. They taught me a poetry at school. My teachers, 
poetry. It says, gentle lords and ladies, gay, on the mountain dawns the day. And I was rhyming that. <laughs> gay. We used to call people, he's happy and gay. He's happy and gay. No, no, so that is, I mean, this is a very jovial person, whether men or women. She's happy and gay. Man is happy and gay. I thought, nothing, but now they're talking about gay. So what is gay? You know, it seems something suspicious about the way things they're writing about gay, gay. Now I know that's for sodomites. You use such a beautiful word, throwing it away. Now, if I told our chairman is happy and gay. <laughs> He might want to punch me on the jaw. So what are you, you taking me for? You need to get that. I said, no. When I used to go to school, you know, it was beautiful. Oh, God, I said, look, no more. Then God Almighty punishes them with AIDS. What a beautiful word, AIDS, for acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Nice. Then they reduce it to AID, filthy, dirty disease. God Almighty is, you know, punishing you for it, but no. You see, you haven't got the answers. Islam gives you the answer to your problem. It says, marry women of your choice by twos and threes and fours, but if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. And there is a type of man who doesn't mind taking on extra responsibility. And there is a type of woman who doesn't mind sharing a husband. But your law won't allow that. They don't mind. You'll be getting a dozen illegitimate children every year. That they don't mind. You are a stud. Then you are a stud. They call you a stud. But if you lawfully said, look, I'll look after both these women and the children offspring. I'm prepared to be responsible. So no, you go to jail. You can plant your wild oats as you like. But don't marry. Sodomy, legalized. Lesbianism, legalized. But when it comes to lawful marriage, natural. Polygamy is natural, you say, oh, my dead body, go to jail. And I said, this is an answer to your problem. You won't listen, then you simmer in your soup. You see, so God Almighty is a barber. You know, barber, people cutting hairs. He says here, Book of Isaiah, Book of Isaiah, said, the prince of the prophets. You say the fifth gospel, Isaiah, Book of Isaiah, the fifth gospel. In the same day, the Lord will shave with a hired razor. The Lord means God will shave with a hired razor. <laughs> hired razor, this one here, sir. They didn't have safety razors then. Hired razor, the cutthroat, we call them cutthroats. With those from beyond the river, with the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the legs. He will shave your head and the hair of your legs. It doesn't say how high. <laughs> you tell that to a barber today, you know, to shave. <laughs> he said, don't you know about Imac or Veet or what? What does it mean? You know, in England, man, you see these Edwards every day. Huh? God Almighty, he, he takes this and he's going to shave people's legs, hair on the legs. What are you trying to do to God, Yahi?